Hi, my name is Mustafa and this is Abigail. This video is part of a series of videos where we intend to break down all you need to know about entering a general surgery training program in the UK. Perfect, so we're gonna look at breaking down the portfolio, the interview, and then we're going to interview ourselves, an SD1 and an SD8 to try and get their experience on surgery and general surgery itself. In this series, we're gonna break down every single aspect of the general surgical portfolio and give you tips along the way. Today, we're going to talk to you about postgraduate degrees and qualifications, as well as extracurricular achievements and prizes that you can gain lots of points on. In the second video, we're going to be looking at the quality improvement project and or clinical audit. Week three, we can talk to you about teaching experience and how you can maximize your points there, as well as training and teaching. In week four, we're going to be looking at presentations, breaking this down into a local, national, international level, and then we're also going to discuss publications as well. Week five is a nice and easy week where we talk about leadership and management skills. And although this is nice and easy, there's lots of points to begin here, and we think every single person can get the maximum points here. In the final week will be our biggest video where we'll be discussing three things, the commitment to surgery, looking at clinical procedure experience, and lastly, the organization of the portfolio itself, which will be three points. So before we get started, please take a minute to subscribe to our channel. What that does is it lets you see every single video of this series straight away when we publish it. Also, it really helps us and we'd really appreciate it. Perfect. Okay, so the first sections that we'll be looking at today in the portfolio are going to be on postgraduate degrees, degrees that you can obtain within medicine itself. So that'll be the first section. And then the second section will be about additional achievements, which you can gain um, basically during medical school and after medical school. Just before we start, just some general tips. If you go through the portfolio and look at it all together, it might seem very daunting to you. But if you break them down step by step and go through each section and finish it before you move on to the next one, this might make the process a lot easier. One other tip is don't spend too long on one section. Sometimes you don't want to max out all the points in the section because actually it takes too much time and you can get much easier points in other sections. So, so basically move on when you feel you've done enough in one section. Exactly. Okay, so the second point is do not be scared to email a consultant, you know, message registrar or simply go up to them in their yeah. clinics and ask if they've got any projects going on. Yeah. Also, don't feel disheartened if they don't reply to you because often they just don't see it or they're just so busy they don't get back. So you know what, just move on and send a message to someone else. Excellent. Okay. Finally, if you've got a piece of evidence and you've done something, you've worked really hard, you've got yourself a certificate, why don't you start with making a portfolio from day one? put it into the relevant section of the portfolio and keep building on time to time. Mm -hmm. If there's emails that the consultant's written you, keep those as well. You never know what's useful. So just disclaimer, this video is based on the 2020 general surgery portfolio. And as a result, you know, every year there's sometimes small little changes to do with points and different things which they like. And um, so just be aware of this if you're looking at this visit video later on. So to start off with, in terms of degrees, you can get either zero points two points or four points. There's no in between. So first of all, if you've graduated from medical school with just a medical degree, no special honors or first degree, that's just zero points and that's just the way it is. And if that's the case for you, don't worry about it. Move on to the next one. You can get many points, many more things. Okay, so with two points, the first thing we want to talk about in two, get, for getting two points is basically doing an integrated degree and um, obtaining um, a 2.1. Um, so basically, if you do an integrated degree, a tip we would give is trying to do it in something that you know you maybe want to specialise in in the future. So for example, if you you know want to be an endocrinologist, then you could possibly do it in a BMSC in diabetes or something like that. However, if you're not sure what you want to do in the future, it's good to keep it um, you know very broad, you know, either like medical education, um, healthcare improvement, all these things are good if you're not entirely sure what you want to specialise in. A good one for surgery is lots of people do anatomy. And that teaches you lots of anatomy. Every surgeon needs to know anatomy. It's a very good way to get anatomy out of the way because it's a very difficult topic. So to get four points, you need to get a first class in any degree, whether this is a BMSc, whether this, this is your undergraduate degree in medicine, or whether this is a degree that you've done before you started your medical course. Other things to get four points are very time consuming, such as doing a PhD or an MD. And there'll be one or two of you who have that, but most people in the world don't have that. So don't worry about that at all. So obviously four points is great, but you have to think to yourself, is it necessary to take this year out to get these four points? Because it may not be necessary and you can you know, use your time instead to get the other points um, in other areas. However, a nice point to add is that if you do a BMSc, often it's not as intense you know, as your medical degree course. So therefore you've got more time if you want to work on your CV um, and really like dedicate time towards that. So uh, that's something to consider as well. Yeah, exactly. Now we're going to move on to the second section of the general surgery portfolio, which is additional achievements. 
So this is essentially prizes that you can get through medical school. So this, um, the points range from two, three, four, and five, or zero, obviously, if you don't get any of these. Um, so for two points, it, this is for things like scholarships and bursaries. Now, this may sound quite intimidating, but actually there are a lot of scholarships and bursaries that go about at medical schools that people just don't know of. So if you're unsure, you know, speak to your medical school and ask them what um, bursaries are going about. Often they are, there's money involved with them, especially if someone's, you know, from a lower socioeconomic background, they can often be um, eligible for this kind of thing. So definitely keep your eyes out for that because not a lot of people go for them and they're just missed out on. Hmm. Three points if you um, so for the for three points if you come in the top twenty percent of your year during an exam, um, you can ask the medical school to write you a letter to prove this, and I advise you that you do this because it gives you three easy points on your CV, and it's just because you performed well in the exams. And now if you performed in the top ten percent of of your university, if then the university wrote you a letter to say this, and they can say this at the end of your finals, you can ask them to write this for you. That gives you four points. Now what defines it between four and five points is if you have a national prize as a top ten percent then that gives you five points, that gives you the maximum amount of points. Mm. So there's certain things you can do that. One is there's a Duke Elder exam of ophthalmology, and um, that's a national prize examination, and people all around the country compete to get the top 10% of this exam. And um, you might think ophthalmology is nothing to do with general surgery. It doesn't matter. It's a national prize exam, and if you do it, you get and you get top 10%, you get five full points. Other ways to do this is say you presented at a national conference, a poster, and you won a prize. For, for a really good poster or for a really good oral presentation, you get maximum points in this. And the benefit of that is it's two for one. One, you've presented a poster, so you've got points during presentations, which we'll discuss in another video. And two, you've got five points for this, prizes and awards. There are other ways you can also get points, um, which is through you know, essay writing and national competitions. A good website to look up for this are the Royal Society of Medicine, or as well, I've written down here, um, the Student Medic, which has a list of all the different essays that are currently going about. A good thing about this is that often people do not even apply for the essays. Um, and a bonus as well is that sometimes there's about a couple of hundred pounds um, prize money as well. So there's a really good way to just um, get your five points as well. So we've come to an end of our first video. We hope you enjoyed it. I know in medical school, they don't really teach you this kind of stuff and they don't teach you how to prepare to become a, to become a general surgeon or to go to your specialty training. So what we hope to do, we hope to break down every little bit of the specialty training for you, how to increase your portfolio and make sure you're very competitive. The next video we'll do is about quality improvement project or an audit, something that we should all be very familiar with, and we break down every little aspect and all you need to know about it and how to get started with your own very quality improvement project. Um, if you like what you see and if you're keen to watch the next one, please subscribe down below. It means a lot to us. It will mean that you get it, it mean that we get it. And if you have any questions at all or any comments or any advice or feedback, please leave a comment for us down below. Yeah. Also, if you have any like advice that you think would be useful, you know, in applying to um, general surgery, then please, you know, comment below so other people can see any types of advice that you have.